The casting process for the 1975 movie Escape to Witch Mountain was a thoughtful journey, combining auditions, chemistry tests, and pivotal moments that shaped the final cast. The lead roles of Tony and Tia, the mysterious siblings with telekinetic powers, went to Ike Eisenman and Kim Richards. Eisenman, who was already an experienced child actor, was chosen for his ability to balance innocence with a sense of maturity. For Tia, Richard's background in acting since age four and her natural chemistry with Eisenman sealed the deal. Eddie Albert, a seasoned actor, was cast as Jason O'Day, the sibling's protector. His warm, avuncular charm was seen as a perfect contrast to the Erie Mountain setting and the children's supernatural abilities. Ray Milland, known for his versatile performances, played the antagonist. Aristotle bully tenet, his stern demeanor and penetrating gaze made him an ideal choice for the role of a ruthless millionaire seeking to exploit the children's powers. Donald Pleasance, with his distinctive voice and intense presence, was cast as Bolt's sidekick, Mulligan. His ability to portray both menace and humor was crucial for the character's development. The casting directors looked for actors who could bring depth to their roles, creating a balance between the supernatural elements and the human emotions. The result was a compelling film that has endured in the hearts of audiences for generations. The director of Escape to Witch Mountain, John Ho, brought a unique vision to the film. He was influenced by his background in British horror and fantasy films, which gave Witch Mountain a distinctive style and tone. Ho's approach was to create a sense of wonder and excitement, blending elements of science fiction, adventure, and horror. Ho's creative influences included classic films such as The Day the Earth Stood Still and The Invisible Man. He also drew inspiration from his own experiences growing up, which he incorporated into the film's themes of childhood, adventure, and discovery. In terms of style, Ho favored a naturalistic approach, using real locations and minimal special effects. He worked closely with the cast and crew to create a cohesive vision for the film. Ho's collaborative style extended to the cast, including young actors Kim Richards and Ike Eisenman, who played the lead roles of Tia and Tony. Ho spent time with the actors, helping them understand their characters and the story. Ho's approach to directing was hands-on, and he was involved in every aspect of the film's production. He worked closely with the cinematographer, Frank Stanley, to create a visual style that was both striking and accessible. Ho's use of wide shots and natural lighting gave the film a sense of realism and immediacy, while his attention to detail ensured that every scene was carefully crafted. In addition to his work with the cast and crew, Ho also collaborated with the film's writers, Robert Malcolm Young and Henry Efron, to develop the story and characters. Ho's input was crucial in shaping the film's final form, and his vision for the project was clear from the outset. Overall, Ho's directorial vision for Escape to Witch Mountain was one of adventure, discovery, and wonder. His approach to directing was collaborative and hands-on, and he worked closely with the cast and crew to create a film that was both entertaining and thought-provoking. Ho's influence can be seen in every frame of the film, from the stunning visuals to the compelling story and characters. In 1975, Escape to Witch Mountain captivated audiences with its thrilling storyline. As you watch this video, get ready for a roller coaster of emotions. There are funny, shocking, and sad facts about the movie coming up, so stay tuned. Have you ever been deeply moved by a scene or moment in this film? Share your thoughts in the comments below. We'd love to hear your most cherished memories or personal experiences related to this movie. The 1975 movie Escape to Witch Mountain was a significant production with notable set design and filming locations. The movie was primarily shot in California, utilizing various landscapes to depict the mountainous regions and small town settings. The production design team, led by Elwa Jensen, created a mix of realistic and fantastical sets. The Tucker family's rustic cabin, hidden in the mountains, was a central location, filled with warm, earthy tone and cozy furnishings. The design aimed to convey a sense of isolation and mystery, heightening the supernatural elements of the story. Another key set was the interior of the spooky, gothic-style Banning Mansion. The design featured dark colors, antique furniture, and secret passages, enhancing the eerie atmosphere. The production team also built a replica of a 1950s diner, complete with vintage decor and memorabilia. One of the logistical challenges faced during filming was working with child actors, 
particularly coordinating their schedules around school hours. Additionally, filming in mountainous regions presented its own set of difficulties, such as unpredictable weather and limited accessibility. As for innovative techniques, the film employed the use of then groundbreaking special effects, such as matte paintings and rear projection to create the illusion of the children's supernatural abilities. These techniques allowed for seamless integration of live action and visual effects, contributing to the film's overall enchanting atmosphere. Escape to Witch Mountain is a 1975 Disney film that many people hold fond memories of, particularly those who first saw it as children. The movie centers around two orphan siblings, Tony and Tia, who possess special powers and are on the run from those who wish to exploit them. While the special powers aspect of the movie may have been exciting for young viewers, the adult actors are what really make the film watchable. The child actors, while typical for the time, may not hold the same appeal for modern audiences. The movie has its share of cheesy moments and questionable special effects, which can be off-putting for some. The special effects are reminiscent of the Doctor Who style, which may not hold up to today's standards. Despite this, the movie has its charms and can still be enjoyable for children. When compared to other Disney films, Escape to Witch Mountain may not be the best that the studio has to offer. There are many Disney classics from the 1930s to the present that are more engaging and well-made. However, for those who have already watched the Disney classics, this movie can serve as a way to keep children entertained for a while. Overall, Escape to Witch Mountain is a fun movie for children, but may not hold the same enchantment for adults. The competent adult actors and the exciting concept of special powers make it worth watching, but the cheesy special effects and typical child actors may be a drawback for some. Nonetheless, it can still be an enjoyable movie for families to watch together. The 1975 film Escape to Witch Mountain features a memorable score and soundtrack that significantly contribute to its magical atmosphere and sense of adventure. The music, composed by Johnny Mandel, sets the emotional tone for the film and enhances the narrative. Mandel, an accomplished composer and musician, skillfully crafted the score to evoke a sense of wonder and mystery. He effectively used a variety of instruments, such as the harp, flute, and strings, to create a mystical and enchanting sound. The music perfectly complements the film's story of two orphan siblings with telekinetic powers who are on the run from those who wish to exploit their abilities. One of the most memorable pieces from the score is the theme for the siblings, Tony and Tia. The gentle, lilting melody conveys their innocence and purity, while also hinting at their extraordinary abilities. The theme is reprised throughout the film, serving as a constant reminder of their bond and the love they share. In addition to the score, the film also features a number of popular songs from the 1970s. These songs, which include I've Got a Feeling We'll Be Seeing Each Other Again by Hamilton, Joe Frank and Reynolds, and Believe in Yourself by Gladys Knight and the Pips, add to the film's upbeat and positive tone. The soundtrack for Escape to Witch Mountain is a perfect example of how music can enhance a film's narrative and emotional tone. The score, with its enchanting melodies and mystical sound, perfectly captures the magic and wonder of the film story. The popular songs from the 1970s, with their upbeat and positive vibes, add to the film's sense of adventure and excitement. Overall, the music for Escape to Witch Mountain is an essential part of the film's enduring appeal. The marionettes from Escape to Witch Mountain's playroom sequence continue to delight audiences today, finding a permanent home at the historic Bob Baker Marionette Theater in Los Angeles. While the mansion of the villainous Mr. Bolt, portrayed by Ray Mullane, was primarily shot in one location, the playroom was constructed on the Disney soundstage to facilitate the special effects team's work. Ray Mullane, known for his role in Escape to Witch Mountain, later appeared in Heart to Heart playing the same character in two consecutive seasons, albeit with a slight variation in his character's name. In the first episode, his character was named Steven, while in the second episode, he was named Steven. This inconsistency, however, did not detract from the show's popularity or Millane's performance. One of the most iconic scenes in Escape to Witch Mountain is when Tony and Tia, the two orphan siblings with telekinetic powers, demonstrate their abilities in the barn. The director, John Ho, Use a combination of practical effects and clever editing to show the children moving objects around the barn, creating a sense of wonder and excitement. The performances of the child actors, Ike Eisenman and Kim Richards, are authentic and endearing, 
making the audience root for them as they use their powers to fend off the greedy villain. Aristotle Bull Lieutenant, the cinematography in this scene is also noteworthy. The use of wide shots to establish the barn's location and close-ups to capture the children's reactions and the objects moving create a dynamic and engaging visual experience. The muted color palette and natural lighting further enhance the scene's magical and mysterious atmosphere. This scene had a significant impact on the audience as it showcases the children's unique abilities and sets the stage for the rest of the movie's action-packed and supernatural events. The filmmakers and actors have also commented on the scene's importance. In an interview, Ike Eisenman stated, that barn scene was a pivotal moment in the movie. It was the first time Tony and Tia realized they had these powers, and it was exciting to film. Meanwhile, John Ho mentioned that the barn scene was one of his favorites, as it allowed him to explore the children's powers in a creative and visually striking way. Overall, the barn scene in Escape to Witch Mountain is a standout moment in the film, showcasing the director's vision, the actor's talent, and the crew's technical prowess. Eddie Albert, known for his role in Escape to Witch Mountain, was a student of Maria Ospenskaya in her acting class. Donald Pleasan, who also starred in the film, gave his final stage performance in George Bernard Shaw's Heartbreak House at His Majesty's Theatre in Perth, Australia in 1994, alongside his daughter Polly Pleasans. The cat that played Winky was challenging to work with, causing numerous cuts and scratches to Ike Eisenman, who portrayed Tony. Released in 1975, the Disney film Escape to Witch Mountain tells the story of two orphan siblings with telekinetic and telepathic powers who go on the run from an unscrupulous millionaire trying to exploit their abilities. The movie, based on the novel by Alexander Key, resonated with audiences due to its unique blend of science fiction, adventure, and family-friendly storytelling. The film tapped into the cultural fascination with the supernatural and the unknown, which was prevalent in the 1970s. Audiences were captivated by the idea of children with extraordinary abilities, which was a fresh and intriguing concept at the time. The movie's success led to a sequel, Return from Witch Mountain, and a short-lived television series, further solidifying its impact on popular culture. Escape to Witch Mountain also contributed to discussions on relevant social and cultural themes. The film explores the idea of belonging and acceptance as the siblings, Tony and Tia, struggle to find a place where they can feel safe and be themselves. This theme resonated with audiences, particularly those who felt like outsiders or had experienced discrimination. Moreover, the movie highlights the dangers of exploiting others for personal gain, as depicted by the millionaire's relentless pursuit of the siblings for his own selfish interests. This message served as a cautionary tale for audiences encouraging them to consider the ethical implications of their actions. In conclusion, Escape to Witch Mountain left an indelible mark on popular culture, resonating with audiences through its engaging storytelling, unique premise, and exploration of relevant social themes. The film's success not only led to a series of spin-offs, but also sparked important conversations about acceptance, belonging, and ethical responsibility. Ike Eisenman, the young actor who played Tony in Escape to Witch Mountain, had a father who was a children's show host in Houston during the 1960s. On the other hand, Eddie Albert, who played Aristotle Bolt, had an equally impressive real-life role as a caregiver for his son, Edward Albert, during his battle with Alzheimer's disease. Despite his age, Eddie remained physically active and healthy until just a month before his death at 99. The film itself was an unusual choice for Disney, as its stars were predominantly elderly. While the movie may not have been a typical Disney production, it has remained a beloved classic for many, showcasing the talents of its veteran cast. The film's unique charm and the strength of its performers continue to captivate audiences, making it a standout entry in Disney's extensive filmography. Released in 1975, the Disney film Escape to Witch Mountain received mixed reviews from critics, but was generally well received by audiences. The film, which combines elements of science fiction, adventure, and family genres, tells the story of two orphan siblings with telekinetic and telepathic abilities who go on the run from an evil millionaire trying to exploit their powers. Some critics praise the film's unique storyline and special effects, while others criticize its pacing and acting. Vincent Canby of the New York Times called the film a curious, rather appealing mixture of science fiction, comedy, and horror while Roger Ebert of the Chicago Sun-Times gave it a more negative review. 
stating that the special effects are the best thing about Escape to Witch Mountain, but they can't make up for the weak story and cardboard characters. Despite the mixed critical reception, Escape to Witch Mountain was a box office success and developed a cult following over the years. The film was nominated for several awards, including the Saturn Award for Best Science Fiction Film and the Hugo Award for Best Dramatic Presentation. It also won the Academy of Science Fiction, Fantasy and Horror Film Saturn Award for Best Special Effects. The accolades received by Escape to Witch Mountain are significant for those involved in the film, as they helped establish the careers of several actors and filmmakers. The film marked the first major role for Kim Richards and Ike Eisenman, who played the sibling leads and helped solidify Disney's reputation as a producer of quality family films. The film's success also led to a sequel, Return from Witch Mountain, and a remake in 29. Overall, Escape to Witch Mountain remains a beloved classic in the world of family films and a testament to Disney's enduring legacy in the entertainment industry. Ike Eisenman, known for his role in Escape to Witch Mountain, made headlines in the 2000s when he changed his name to Ike Eisenman or Lake Eisenman. This unusual spelling made it difficult to find information about him, but he later reverted to his original name. Ray Mullane, another actor in the film, was not only an accomplished actor, but also a writer of short stories. Donald Pleasance, who also starred in the movie, won the London Critics Award for his performance in The Caretaker and the British Variety Award for Best Stage Actor for his role in The Man in the Glass Booth. During the filming of Escape to Witch Mountain in 1975, some fascinating behind-the-scenes stories unfolded. Eddie Albert, who played the antagonist Jason O'Day, was known for his pranks on set. In one scene, where he had to react to a magical event, he decided to add some humor. Instead of showing genuine surprise, he responded by comically overacting, much to the amusement of his co-stars and the crew. This unexpected moment made it into the final cut, adding a touch of lightheartedness to the movie. The two child stars, Ike Eisenman and Kim Richards, formed a close bond during filming. They spent much of their free time exploring the movie's locations, often accompanied by their on-screen robot, Tweedledee. The robot, however, was not as cooperative as the child actors. Its heavy frame and unpredictable movements led to several mishaps, including a few near misses with the children. The film's director, John Ho, had a unique approach to directing the child actors. He would often tell them stories to help them understand their characters' emotions and motivations. For instance, to convey the sense of loss that Tony and Tia felt, Ho shared stories about his own childhood experiences. This personal touch helped Eisenman and Richards deliver more authentic performances. The production team faced numerous challenges while filming the climactic scenes in the mountains. The unpredictable weather often disrupted their plans and the rugged terrain posed logistical difficulties. Despite these challenges, the crew managed to capture some breathtaking shots, contributing to the film's magical atmosphere. In one scene, where Tony and Tia are seen floating in the air, the special effects team used a combination of wires, harnesses, and camera tricks. However, the process was far from smooth. Both child actors had to be carefully hoisted into the air, and the slightest miscalculation could have resulted in injury. Despite the risks, Eisenman and Richard showed remarkable courage and professionalism, contributing to the scene's enchanting effect. These anecdotes offer a glimpse into the making of Escape to Witch Mountain, revealing the camaraderie, creativity, and resilience of the cast and crew. Their experiences added depth and charm to the film, making it a beloved classic for generations. Eddie Albert, known for his role in Escape to Witch Mountain, was an enthusiastic agronomist who transformed his front yard into a cornfield and his backyard into a vegetable garden. Meanwhile, Donald Pleasant, another actor in the film, was considered for various guest roles in Doctor Who, and was even approached for Borussia and Doctor Who the movie. He had six daughters to support, and when asked why he kept making horror movies, simply replied, because I have six daughters to support. Despite not being the main focus of this discussion, these actors' other pursuits and motivations add depth to their performances in Escape to Witch Mountain. Released in 1975, Escape to Witch Mountain is a Disney science fiction film that has left a lasting impact on film history. The movie tells the story of two orphan siblings with telekinetic and telepathic powers who go on the run from an evil millionaire trying to exploit their abilities. The film's innovative storyline and unique characters have influenced future filmmaking, 
particularly in the genres of science fiction and family films. The movie's portrayal of children with extraordinary abilities was groundbreaking and paved the way for similar films such as The Chronicles of Narnia and Harry Potter. Escape to Witch Mountain also inspired a wave of Disney films in the 1970s and 1980s that featured children in fantastical settings such as The Apple Dumpling Gang and Flight of the Navigator. The film's success demonstrated the potential for family-friendly science fiction films and helped establish Disney as a major player in the genre. In addition to its impact on filmmaking, Escape to Witch Mountain has inspired numerous subsequent works. The movie was followed by two sequels, Return from Witch Mountain and Beyond Witch Mountain, as well as a television series and a remake in 29. The film's characters and storyline have also been adapted into books, comics, and video games. Overall, Escape to Witch Mountain has left a lasting legacy and influence on film history, future filmmaking, and popular culture. Its innovative storyline, unique characters, and family-friendly approach have inspired countless subsequent works and continue to captivate audiences today. Eddie Albert, known for his role in the television show Green Acres, established a non-profit organization to introduce inner-city children to farm life. In Escape to Witch Mountain, he stars alongside Ike Eisenman, who also appeared in Star Trek II The Wrath of Khan. During a scene in the movie, Tony and Tia watch Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs. In a later film, Head Office, Albert would work with Merrick Butrick, another Star Trek II actor. These connections show the interconnectedness of the film and television industry. It's fascinating to see how actors' careers intersect in unexpected ways. The inclusion of the Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs scene adds a touch of nostalgia, making the movie even more enjoyable for audiences of all ages. Eddie Albert, known for his production of educational films and documentaries, made a significant contribution to sex education with his films Human Beginnings and Human Growth. These films, aimed at preteens, remained in use for almost four decades. Donald Pleasance, on the other hand, had a successful career in theater and film. He was nominated for four Tony Awards as Best Actor, including for his role in The Caretaker and its film adaptation, The Guest. Despite his numerous nominations, Pleasance never won a Tony Award. Before his acting career, Pleasant served as a wireless operator in Lancaster Bombers and 166 Squadron, Royal Air Force. His military background and successful acting career demonstrate his versatility and dedication to his craft. Eddie Albert, known for his role in Escape to Witch Mountain, had an extensive career in entertainment. As early as 1933, he co-hosted the radio show The Honeymooner's Grace, an Eddie show in New York City. After this, he transitioned to films, where he played a variety of roles. In the 1980s, he became a spokesperson for Beltone Products. Dan Seymour, another actor in the movie, retired from films in 1959 and moved on to television. He continued to play villainous characters on the small screen. These actors' careers illustrate the versatility and longevity possible in the entertainment industry. Their dedication to their craft and ability to adapt to different mediums and roles have left a lasting impact on the industry. Eddie Albert, known for his role in Escape to Witch Mountain, had a diverse background in gathering intelligence. Hired by the United States government, he conducted surveillance on Nazi and Japanese activities in Mexican waters while on sailing expeditions and performing with a Mexican circus. Ike Eisenman, who played Tony, took the initiative to learn to play the harmonica for his role although professional harmonica player Tommy Morgan was later brought in for the dubbing. The movie also features a character named Uberman, who drives the villain around in a black sedan, predating the popular ride-hailing company by several decades. The inclusion of a character with the ability to see the future adds an intriguing element to the storyline. This film features a stunning replica of a Byzantine castle, Xanthus, which was built using lava rock from MT. Vesuvius, and materials from various European countries. The castle served as the residence of the character Aristotle Bolt, played by Ray Millaint. Dan Seymour, who acted in the film, formed a lifelong friendship with director Fritz Lang after working together on the set of Cloak and Dagger in 1946. During the fight scene between Tony and Truck, stuntman Dermot Downs accidentally hit actor Ike Eisenman resulting in a greenish bruise that is visible in some scenes despite the makeup department's efforts. In the 1975 film Escape to Witch Mountain, the Bixby Creek Bridge in Big Sur, California, becomes a notable backdrop. 
This bridge, also known as Bixby Canyon Bridge, is an impressive architectural feat standing as a testament to human engineering. Donald Pleasance, who plays a significant role in the movie, has an intriguing backstory. Initially a conscientious objector during World War II, he later changed his mind and joined the British Royal Air Force. Unfortunately, his plane was shot down and he was taken prisoner of war by the Nazis until his release in 1945. Another cast member, Denver Pyle, shared a close friendship with James Best, lasting from 1958 until 1997. Their bond, forged over the years, highlights the camaraderie often found in the film industry. Kyle Richards made her acting debut in the 1975 film, Escape to Witch Mountain. In this movie, she starred alongside Ray Mullane, an accomplished actor who had a near-fatal accident on the set of Hotel Imperial in 1939. During the filming of a cavalry charge scene, Mullane's saddle came loose, causing him to fall into a pile of broken masonry. He suffered multiple fractures and lacerations, but ultimately survived. Later in his career, Mullane won the Best Actor Oscar for his role in The Lost Weekend in 1945. When accepting the award from Ingrid Bergman, he gave one of the shortest speeches in Oscar history, simply saying, thank you. Thank you very much indeed. I'm greatly honored. His acceptance speech can still be viewed on YouTube today. If Escape to Witch Mountain left an unforgettable impression on you, we'd love to hear your stories. Share your memories of this 1975 classic and how it affected you personally. Did it spark your imagination, influence your movie tastes, or inspire you in some way? We invite you to like, share, and subscribe to join us in exploring more cinematic gems. Your engagement helps us create a vibrant community for movie lovers of all ages. Let's celebrate these timeless films.